One, two, three. One, two, three. Check, check, check. One, two, three. I swear to God, we gotta replace this mic stand. Check, 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 uh man, I can't wait to actually set up this fucking studio. Biggity again. bang, bit bang bang, biggity, biggity bang. Check, check, check. One, two, three. All right, you talk. Um, so this is probably about the level that I'll be talking at. Um, the only, actually, there. Uh, I love Doctor Bird. Mer, mer. There we go. All right. Cool beans. Let's do it. Let's Bring up the names. Season nine. Okay. Um, cool. Let's begin. Hello, everybody. And welcome back. It's been a long time to the Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Ashley Paramore. Uh, I'm Justin Robert Young. And it's been like a year. Yeah. What did we do? And uh, Doctor Who hasn't been on. It Nothing was, it happened. It was off for a while. Um, it's very although boring. I feel like we've done a podcast since then. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, maybe one. We did. Yeah. yeah. One episode. No. We got married. So that's done. Job's yeah. done. Job's done with that. And now we're back to doing what we what we know to do, which is talk about Doctor Who. Yeah. And, I'm and very, Doctor Who came back. Yay. And all its wibbly wobbly timey wimey glory. So uh, if you're unfamiliar and, and you just listened to the Jury Moore podcast and now you're like, oh, wait, I want more uh, uh, Jury and Ashley in my life. And this is the place to do it. Uh, then then let's just catch you up. We do a Doctor Who podcast. It's called Who's the Boss? It's what you're listening to. Uh, number two, we gen generally, 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 sen sounds like a female wrestler. Um, we focus more on the current iteration of Doctor Who, not so much on the uh, 60s and 70s iteration. Although I watched a bit of that on the plane the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, was it was it on like the United app? To watch? No, or it was just you? I had I was on one of the flights with um, Direct TV, and it was just on BBC America. Oh, uh, they, they still air that? Oh yeah, every once oh in a while. Oh my god, that's adorable! It's really just amazing how much it effectively was a stage play. Yeah, like they were just on. It was like on very obvious sound stages, you know, acting out and doing stuff like that with a very tiny, tiny budget. Oh yeah, well I mean like it would if if somebody made that episode in the YouTube creator space, it would be deemed a failure because it would look like shit, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. It means that we've, we've come so far and obviously the storytelling has endured because it is what we base 
the current iteration on, including very specifically the opening of this season, which is a two-parter involving the Doctor's relationship with Davros, the leader of the Daleks. Uh, we go to Skaro, and for two episodes... But it was a surprise. It's yes. like, how did you bring me to this invisible, not invisible anymore planet? So you have a couple things at play here. Um a lot. This is a really this is a heavy episode to unpack, and is one of Stephen Moffat's favorite kinds of episodes. Uh, Stephen Moffat loves doing two episodes of Doctor Who. He loves doing mythology episodes because at, at his very heart, and you can go to the Usenet records to prove it, he is just a big kid writing fan fiction, uh, and he loves to do the, uh, the 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 big kind of almost like locked room mystery episodes that are very self contained and have their own uh, sort of point that begins, middles, and ends in the episode and uses elements of the Doctor Who canon to kind of carry the mystery forward. This is more the first one than it is the second one. It's also kind of a return to form over the last few years that shied away from two-parters uh, to go back to that. Ashley, what was your impression of The Magician's Assistant and The Witch's Familiar? Well, before even getting into like the, the details of it, you mentioned the, the whole two-parter thing. Um, I was actually really upset that it was a two-parter for coming back into it. Why is that? Because it had been so long. Like, I do like a lot of the two-parters um, yeah. that, that have come out, but I just wasn't prepared to, like, wait a week. So, like, when I finished the first episode and was WT fuck. Yeah, especially when, you know, there are just some cliffhangers that you kind of can't use, right? You kind of can't kill Clara, and expect us to believe that Claire is really dead. Yeah. Right? Though I was almost kind of hoping that, like, because it was announced that she's leaving the show for real. Now she's leaving the show. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't like that cliffhanger at all. Like, like this opened in, in much like how Stephen Moffat just is not consistent at all. And I guess Doctor Who in general isn't consistent in what they do, but and, yeah. And, um, and and there there is a very legitimate argument that they don't necessarily need to be. Yeah. Because well, it immediately popped a bunch of questions into my head. Like, okay, so Missy's his bestie now. Yeah. Um so that's something. Though I love Missy. I got to say, her character is the bee's knees and I want her to be around forever. Because I love her so much. I love the actress. She, like, does it perfectly. Um, yeah, man, it's crazy. Stephen Moffat, you know, uh, he loves, uh, you know, I think it's about time that he got a uh, sassy older woman character uh, who, who puts the doctor in his place, you know. I feel like I we, we've really been... she's way different. Way different from River, though. I mean, she oh. is different. She's different. And I like her a lot more because... She's more interesting because she has the capacity to, you know, and, and, and there is the inevitable betrayal that will eventually come and, and does several times in this story. So it at least keeps you as a viewer on the uh, on, on the edge a little bit because you don't know whether or not she's got a big master plan. How much of this really is her kind of saying, well, you know, I hate the doctor and I, I always try to kill him. But a this is part of some larger friendship and or it's uh, a game or it's a game and and you know uh loves a game want to play uh yeah th so that whole dynamic just came off really weird to me because like oh i've got the confession dial i've got the i didn't really understand that where did the confession dial even come from i mean it's it's a new mechanic as far as i know so that like, yeah that was made out of whole cloth where he's like oh i'm dying and then he kind of doesn't die at the end of the two parts it's, it's an excuse to get missy and clara together yeah i think and missy to screw with Clara but and th that whole thing was like the that whole first part made me think like okay well Missy's got to have a big part in whatever's going on because they mentioned like you've got to get the doctor's attention you got to do this and she's the one getting the doctor's attention by stopping airplanes so yeah or as we like to call it first act set piece Beep, bop, boop. It's interesting at the beginning of the show, and then it doesn't have anything to do with anything else. <laughs> um, so that was the first thing that yeah. struck me. Um, a couple of other things that, you know, I can suspend because Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, I was really surprised when we got to Scarrow. 
Um, Because, man, the Daleks clean up fast, I guess, because when we saw the episode where, I am not a Dalek, I am human, um, you know, That was on Scarrow, though, right? That Um, was on a a, a Dalek outpost. At the beginning of the episode, when you have the red head where the little Dalek nose comes out of her head because, um, not... Jesus, uh, Matt Smith, his character meets her before Higo gets zapped up and taken to the sky, and then they go to the planet. Yeah. You remember? Because she met on Scaro. Because he's like, oh, not many people can call me or, you know, contact me or whatever. And he's walking with the redhead that's the secret doll. Like, do you huh. remember? I don't. But they if, met if you, on Scaro, you... and Scaro was like a hot, destroyed mess. So, like, all of a sudden, we're like, in, hey, Scaro looks like decent land like it's all cleaned up so that that seemed like weird and inconsistent even once the invisibility wore off and then the other thing that tripped me up is like wait but i thought in that episode two uh clara deleted the memory of the daleks um remembering the doctor yeah the daleks not davros and apparently what, so i what guess we that's are, what what we are getting is a class of daleks that are feeding directly to and from davros yeah, uh, they are cyborgs, not robots, uh, as, as there is a, uh, a, a, a fight in the chat room. And this is certainly a huge plot point of this episode as we again get one of the canonical doctor stories of, uh, you know, as as Craig Ferguson so eloquently put it, that he uh, uses uh, science, compassion and reason to solve problems as opposed to violence and brute force. This is. The key distinction between the Time Lords, or at least the Doctor and the Daleks, uh, and Davros in specific, we get a little bit of a, you know, it gets a little Anakin-y with the, uh, with, with the, uh, yeah. with, with, with the little, uh, uh, you know, coming back and forth to the Doctor interacting with young Davros, right? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't know, I, I guess... I didn't. I didn't mind the episode. I thought it was all right. I, I thought that it was. It was in in many ways Doctor Who at its best. In specific, that it had a lot of really cool, uh, like the monster mechanics uh, or the monster design of Davros's henchman, uh, the Snake uh, Sith Lord, uh, was pretty cool. I liked him. Yeah, I didn't like him. I thought he was weird and I out thought he was of cool place. Looking. He- but I, I agree out of place. And like, then he was, was really re- no writing reason. like the Segway thing so he could float. Well, no, but you that actually kind of got explained because you realize that he's just a bunch of snakes. Yeah. So snakes don't walk. They slither. And yeah. So that's why he was like floating. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I liked him. I agree that he was out of place. Like there really wasn't. It's not like Davros was like, I love snakes, and so therefore I made a snake man. Meh. Meh. I'm Davros. I kind of have the same voice as the Emperor from Star Wars. And Unlimited I, power! I, I love long walks on Scaro and sunsets. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I like that. I thought this was Capaldi. Feeling a lot more comfortable in the role of the doctor than he did uh, in a lot of last last season, right? Yeah, I think he nailed it. Um, I'm really, and I've felt this way, and I think I've said it, we've said it on the podcast before, like, every time I've been introduced to a new doctor, I hate them initially, and then I come to love them. And I didn't necessarily hate Capaldi when he started, but he was just so different. It was jarring compared to, like, the personalities of the last, well the last three <laughs> you know and, and as much as i didn't love the him in in medieval times or renaissance times uh you know rolling in on a tank and being a, a silly goose and stuff i like that, loved that I, I, I don't know if i if i loved everything about that but i do think that peter capaldi this plays to a lot of peter capaldi's strengths he rolls out on a tank with an electric guitar wearing shades Right, I and it's I like, thought I'm like, is this like Mad Max? But it was like like aging rock star guy. That's the doctor that really fits Capaldi the most. Not cranky doctor, not angry doctor, but like 
the coolest version of your dad's friend. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like if if the uh, if you found out that the coolest friend of your dad's happened to be a time lord and offered to take you on these adventures, you'd be like, sure. Like that makes sense. And 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 that as Capaldi makes sense in the way that uh, Motormouth Dreamboat made sense to to both uh, Tennant and and uh, and what's his butt Smith. What's his butt? Yeah, yeah. that butt guy. You know, old butts, ha. butts McGirt. Uh, like like both of them, like absent-minded professor for Smith, Motormouth, uh, cutie pants for Tennant. Teenage dream. Uh, th- that fit for them. Your dad's extraterrestrially cool friend who like also knows how to play guitar. And then all of a sudden you found out that he actually was an original member of Thin Lizzy. Like that is, uh, that is Peter Capaldi. And a lo- in large part because that's Peter Capaldi in real life. He was a yeah. dude who was in rock bands. He's a dude who really was kind of a rock star and sort of lived uh, a, a, a rock star life when it was amazing to live a rock star life in England in the late 70s and 80s. So it's like, I, I very much enjoyed that, and I feel like that carried itself out throughout both episodes. Is there anything that you felt didn't land? I mean, I mean the only thing that... Well, I don't know that it things didn't land per se, but I mean, this is definitely kind of a classic Moffat thing where it's not that there's only love, there's love in the universe and it solves all, but we kind of got like the mercy thing out of that. And it's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll let that pass. But it's kind of it's a just Bill and like, Ted's ending, by the way. Yeah. You know, like he literally Bill intended, you know, the ending's like, wait, why are you able to say mercy? It's like, oh, wait, like. You know, he uh, it's because I'm going to run out and I'm going to go and teach Davros mercy in that one moment. And that way they'll it'll be there for Clara San Dimas football rules. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I was almost expecting like, is he going to save Davros as a child so he doesn't become this evil maniacal thing? We did. Well, he did save him, but oh, that yeah, that's true. But no, he saved him because that it's way he paradox. would know mercy. Oh, he would gotcha. know mercy, and that and what apparently we've never seen before is a Dalek trying to say that they have mercy, because Davros, who programs them, has the capacity for it, and yet we just never see it. Yes, until you put Clara in a Dalek this time for real. Although I guess she wasn't a Dalek. She before. wasn't a Dalek for real. Before, time. okay. But that was the other version of her. The uh, before she when she walked into the time stream and was scattered and yeah, and she died as the Dalek on the planet. Uh, so yeah, that was. Um, I felt like that was interesting. And although as as that Deus Ex Machina kind of goes, which I've I've made fun of quite a bit. Uh, I wasn't so upset with it here. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't really think because at least it had its mechanics, right? Yeah, it was like okay, it's not like what has happened many times where it's like, oh, love will heal it, and they fucking lay of hands on you know somebody's wound, and because they all believe in fairies, it yeah. heals. Um, uh, MacBook Pro says in the chat, the Missy dragging around Claire thing was a little awkward. It def- that definitely was. It, it that whole dynamic was just really confusing. Like going back to the like, oh, all of a sudden Missy's a friend, kind of, not really, and seemingly helpful, but also oddly jealous, maybe. Yeah, well, that I, I that think, was kind of. So I, don't I, know. I really didn't mind. I thought that they both did great work as actors and and the dialogue writing was not bad I, I actually really enjoyed it the biggest problem is that we don't have a whole lot of motivations yeah you know like really uh, the, and that has been kind of systemic of some of the worst writing that has been on the show or, or when the show falls into holes it's you know really we're unclear on missy's motivation aside from like blah 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 i'm a time lord stay up out of my race's business it's a time lord thing you wouldn't understand uh Clara really, you know, we ended the last season with Clara and the doctor lying to each other. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, so so you would think that there is some kind of repercussions to that. We don't really see it it folded out all that much. And at the end of the day, we really don't have a reason why Missy, uh, or sorry, why Clara is is running along and being so excited about it. Besides, she's the companion, and that's what companions do on Doctor Who. Well, they they did resolve the um, the like oh, Pink was dead and everything in the the Christmas episode. Right or what was that at the end of the Christmas? Oh episode? yeah, no, you're right. You're right. They you're they right. did resolve that with the weird monster dream. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, so it's just you know, uh, you know, Clara snaps to action, uh, called in by unit, you know, to 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 be a part of it and and needs to find the doctor. And I mean, no reason that she's in touch with unit. No, I, I don't know. I mean, that that I guess in in the grand book of like you know uh, uh, writer shortcuts to get her involved in the story, I don't really mind that one all that much. Yeah. Let's talk about something that uh, is is very much uh, I, I believe probably contentious. I haven't really dipped my uh, you know my 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 uh, my toe into the pool of hot take opinions for this episode because we're recording this the day after the second episode aired. Sunglasses. Replacing the sonic screwdriver, sunglass screwdriver. I have a I have a hard time believing that that's gonna. They made stick. a point to show him putting on the glasses like he's the Blues Brothers uh, in in the in the next week on. Yeah. Uh, if all right, so let's let's just take it as if this is they really want to take an iconic, different shift and they want to give something to Capaldi's doctor that none of the other doctors have ever had. And they want to make, uh, him have, you know, Gallifrey glass, the, uh, the magic sunglasses. That, that was the first thing I thought about was Google glass. When I well, saw that. cause he makes a point. He basically, you know, if he wasn't wearing the, 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 the big sunglasses, you would have seen him winking so hard that he broke his eyeball, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to say that, you know, he's into wearable technology, uh, L O L. Let's say that this is replacing the sonic screwdriver uh, on a scale of one to ten. Uh, how how annoyed are you? I'm not annoyed yet, but I have a hard time believing that something so iconic is going to go away completely. Yeah. Like, if the sonic doesn't come back, it's got to come back. It that would be weird to me. Um, I am okay with the sunglasses thing. I think a lot of people won't. Be, I, it depends how they play it off. I don't know. Like I, I don't really have a really strong opinion on it either way. I, but I do want the Sonic back. It, it has all the 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 hallmarks of something that'll just come back toward the end of the ep, at the end of the season. Yeah. Right. That they're gonna need the Sonic, or somebody's gonna be using the Sonic, and they're gonna need to get it back. Or he gets River Sonic. Oh God. She's got. She's gonna be back in this season. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, she is. I think it's the Christmas episode. <sighs> oh, sweetie, I'm sweetie. so sorry, sweetie. Oh. Oh. Man, we're. I, I I think I'm gonna start calling you sweetie. It's gonna be really, really great when her and Missy are on the screen at the same time and they're just repeating the same lines over and over and over again because they're the same I think character they're except so one's different. evil. different. One of them's evil. Yes, you're right. That's how they're different. No. One likes to kill people and one likes to save people. No. They're, I think they're different enough. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as women is, are as different as women can be. Am I right? <laughs> LOL. R slash red pill. E oh, my God. No. <laughs> Don't you even. <laughs> Don't listen to him, guys. Uh, and that's why we got divorced. Oh, stop it. Um. Well, we made it how many weeks? Like three. <laughs> exactly. We, we're, we're about to get to our month anniversary. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we. Um, how would you feel uh, just with, with the whole episode in general? Where was your what was your opinion? I thought I liked it overall. The, and this is we're taking the both of them because they, they all they fit as one episode. Right? Yeah, I, I think I liked it overall. Um, I mean, like I said, the only thing that I think really bothered me was like the weird inconsistencies but that bothers me with every television show so um if i were to put a number on it i'd probably say seven seven out of ten yeah oh i would go maybe a little bit lower than, well no i mean I, I think it was all right i mean it, it, I, lo I love the daleks it, it's, it's hard it's, for me to it's hard though because i have a bit of a lowered expectation like I think there was a time where I watched Doctor Who and I wanted every single episode to be like 
amazing legendary science fiction television. Yeah. And now I just kind of want it to be a decent episode of Doctor Who. And this was a decent episode of Doctor Who. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at the uh, uh, upcoming episodes here. Uh, next week, Under the Lake. Under the Lake, a gleaming black spaceship is recovered, but there's nothing inside. When the base crews start dying, they discover that ghosts are real. The Doctor and Clara arrive to find the base under siege, and the Doctor discovers that there is more than a ghost story. Ooh, Spoiler spooky. alert, there's probably going to be aliens. Uh, this is their, you know, I guess this isn't their, their Halloween episode. They will have a, uh, an episode on Halloween, apparently. Oh, what, what's the title of that one? The Zygon Invasion. Oh, look, it's a oh, wow. two-parter. Wait, I think that there's... Are there three two-parters? So this is... I guess those like hour and a half Sherlock episodes really... Uh... Wow, look at this. So I think all of these are two-parters because you have The Magician's Apprentice and The Witch's Familiar. These are obviously... These were linked episodes and they yeah. have the, the back and forth, right? Under the Lake and Before the Flood... The Girl Who Died and The Woman Who Lived, The Zygon Invasion and The Zygon Inversion. I'm reading just the names of yeah. these episodes. Then Sleep No More, Face the Raven, and then the heaven last sent, two. Heaven Sent, Hell Bent. Yes, Heaven Sent and Hell Bent. And those end the, end the season with the Christmas episode coming up after that. Huh. So I think up That's to kind maybe of crazy. four two-parters. Are they like binging now after they went uh, so long without it? I guess making up for it. No, I, you know, I, I don't mind the two parters generally. I was just not pleased with the first episode being a two parter. <laughs> Here's the only problem I have with two parters is that I think that they in many ways uh, are, are excuses for lazy writing because you don't have to write a complete plot. And so instead of getting two complete plots, like instead of getting a movie and a sequel to a movie, you get one movie broken up. Yeah. Which is very often not satisfying yeah. you know and and i think that at, at times that can get a little worrisome and annoying however you know if they do it right I, I think i mean like this episode these two episodes i think could be one it would have been better if it was one super tight hour as opposed to two hours that I, basically told a I, longer version of the story i disagree with that i mean well they probably could have done that but they would have had to cut out because the first uh part of the two parts they really rushed a lot, a lot of information just to get Missy and Clara out there. Like that Which, was you know, jam packed. And, and 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 there are times where like I I don't know whether or not they want to be a a episodic or serial television show because if they're episodic, then like you can just have open on Missy and Clara on Scaro. And it's just, well, how the fuck did they get here? I don't know. It's Doctor Who. Like, yeah. Now they got to get out. And you can just fill it in with dialogue. Like, like you shouldn't have killed that uh, unit agent. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I talk really fast. And I'm a, a confident older woman. Now, you've never seen a character like this on Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I I feel like it, it could have been it could have been one, but I, I didn't hate it as two. You know, I just think that like for what they wound up doing, for what we wound up getting, it was one episode's worth of plot. Yeah, that's fair. You know, Doctor thinks he's dying. Uh, Davros wants to see him because he's dying. Uh, yeah, that, actually, I don't really understand why the Doctor thought he was dying, other than expecting to get shot by Daleks. I guess is that the idea? That he would that in going to see Davros, yeah, that he was going to die, yeah, because he went to go see Davros because Davros asked, yeah, uh, so maybe that's it. So, anyway, but I mean, so it's like, okay, he assumes that there is a very good chance he's going to die, lays out his last will and testament, parties in m medieval England or Renaissance England, uh, with a Renaissance Dalek, the Renaissance Dalek shows up. Which really aren't a whole lot of rules on how and when we know that Daleks are in human form, but 
You anyway. know when the little things come out well, of their foreheads. I mean, you know when it's like, uh, but at that point, it's like then anybody can shape shift. You know, it's like there's a reason why like the scrolls are an amazing concept in Marvel Comics because they're a shape shifting race. That's what they do. So you never know when someone may or may not be a scroll. But all of a sudden, if everybody could transform, which they kind of can in Doctor Who, like Cybermen have posed as regular people. Daleks have posed as regular people. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know who else, but... Uh, so, you have... All right, uh, going back to, to the, the fact that there's, there's not a whole lot of plot. Two dying friends are going to come... Or one dying friend is inviting uh, an art, his arch enemy uh, to come see him. The, the guy who's going to visit believes this is a trap, and, and although he feels compelled to do it, he uh, decides to take precautions. So, really... Everything about him having these this angst about possibly dying, you really we know he's not going to die. Yeah, because the ep, the show's called Doctor Who, so Doctor Who's not going to die. Uh, so that really is is kind of not doesn't make sense. Yeah, you, know, you can cut that. You just get him right to Scarrow, and now you have a reason for like the Doctor in the heart of Scarrow being surrounded by all of his, by, by all manner of death seems like a big enough reason for Missy and Clara to team up. Yeah. Because Missy, although she might hate the doctor is still a time Lord and time Lords are the sworn enemy of the Daleks. So now enemy of my enemy is my friend and Clara wants to get the doctor out. And so here we go. Like now we're off on this, on this journey. And I like, like, and so everything that happens there basically happens at the end of an episode or like through the second episode. Cause they basically like, we spend the first episode just figuring out what we're doing. And then, you know, we have a bunch of fake deaths and, and then we're off for the second episode. We're off to see the wizard. Yeah. And what, what would you put a number on, on this episode? I mean, you said you'd give both it lower of them than together. Seven, I don't know. Five or six. I thought it was yeah. all right. I thought it was good. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't mind it. Um, you know, it it had some of my my favorite character work yeah in 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 the capaldi version you know and i do like missy i think missy is good i think her being bloodthirsty um and and kind of tricksy is a fun uh element to be well and, and also to be kind of low scale maniacal like i'm just going to kill random people to see how your face looks maniacal as opposed to take over the world arch enemy yeah. you know uh i think it's cool i think and and that's and that's better it's more um it, it's more conducive to her being around more yeah because not everything is and then i take over the world oh no I'm, I'm... do you um speaking of missy and her getting the this whole fabricated confession dial thing do you think that later in the season the confession dial is going to be a thing do you think that that's going to lead to something that the doctor is ashamed of or whatever? Yeah, maybe. I or mean, they, or will they just maybe. like throw it in the garbage and that'll be done? Uh, who knows? I mean, it's the same, you know, it's uh, but when the darkness falls, we will know Doctor Who. Like, you know, who knows? I mean, it 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 very well could be a thing that we come back to, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have the episode next week, uh, Under the Lake. Um, under the Lake. Do, 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 Things do, do, are do, do, do. fake when you uh, bake under the lake. Okay. Uh, Ash, uh, where can people find more of you? Oh, my God. So many places. Healthy Addict on Twitter, and I keep everything up to date on there. Instagram, Snurp Chirt, Fake Gamer Girl on Twitch, Spice Vegan on YouTube. And other things that I'm probably forgetting. Oh, a uh, good enough podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. We you have that John website Teasdale. now. Goodenoughpodcast.com. Look at that. Uh, and then, meanwhile, uh, you can follow me, Justin R. Young, on everything. If you want to email this podcast, put uh, "Who's the Boss" in the subject line and uh, email it to Justin Robert Young at Gmail dot com. That is J U S T I N R O B E R T Y O U N G. At gmail.com. But until next time, 
I'm Justin Robert Young. I'm Ashley Paramore. Woo! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> and we done. Ha. We done, motherfucker. Hi. I have one bit of... Oh, quiet. Quiet double clicks. Quiet. Angela. Wah, wah. Uh, bleep, blop, bleep, bleep. Good job. You want to spill that all over the computer? No, I don't want to. That would be bad. Don't I do, do not that. want to do that. Do not do. Do not do. All right. Some uh, button's on his way to take away ruin him. Yeah. All right. So I... What time is it? All right. I'm going to have to start rocking and rolling here because... We ain't got no time to waste. All right, love uh, you guys. I'm going to probably fall asleep Yeah. after this coffee. I am going to take a break. I'll be right back uh, with Jury. Uh, by the way, the... Uh, fuck. So here's how Jury's going to work. Jury's going to work where I'm going to have a theme each episode... And I will tell a story or talk about something in the news about that theme. And then the rest of it, we will uh, have emails and calls. Maybe I should talk about this on the podcast. Maybe that's a good idea. So maybe we'll do that. All right. I'll talk about the fact that I'm talking about it. But also, I do need a theme. What if the theme is... Hmm, I don't know. All right, I'll be back right here on this channel um, uh, right after I get all this uploaded and posted, and uh, I will talk to you guys very, very, very soon. Let me get some music on. Pa. Mm.